Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you, this is my new business card, and a lot of you have been receiving this in the mail. Um, if you don't have one, uh, the next time that you get an order, um, you'll get one. But on the back of it, it's got a ruler, and it's got this value scale on the back. And what values mean is that they are a terminology to describe dark to light. Okay, zero, sorry, 10 being the highest is white, and 1 being the darkest is black. And then it gets gradually lighter in a scale going all the way up in a percentage like 10% um, lighter per per step up and if you think about it as number one being down in the basement and number 10 being up where the sky is then it's easy to think of yourself as climbing upstairs out of the basement and up to the sky the reason I'm talking about this is I can't I've had a hard time with these banners finding the background color that I want and so what I want to do is show you how come we have these um, how can we have this this grayscale? Let me shake up my paint. Okay, we're going to start with blue violet and cool white. And cool white is a cool color instead of a warm color. That means there's not yellow overtones to it. And what we want to do is we're going to take a little bit of our blue out. We're going to take some of our white. We're going to make two tones of this blue. And what I have done, get this card out of here. As I've mixed my colors, um, this I've made paint chips of all my colors, and so this is the blue violet color, and then this is blue violet plus cool white, and so this is about where I'm going um, as far as the mixed color. Now, if I came up with some different variations, I might make a note like chocolate chip size, like one chocolate chip to five chocolate chips, or something like that, so that it's like a little recipe card. Anyway, so then we get some paint color, some values going here. And that's getting nice and light. What I want is a light, a medium-ish one and a lighter one. But see how those words medium-ish and lighter don't really um, give us a very clear gauge of what's going on. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our value scale to um, describe. We're going to use it as a describing word. Okay, so I get it mixed up. And now what I'll do is I'll hold my value scale here kind of saturate my palette knife with my paint and then I'm going to hold it up and I'm going to squint my eyes at this until the paint disappears in the background. Definitely doesn't appear, disappear at the 8. Let me see if I can get you in closer. Okay, let's see if we can do that. Okay, so we're going to hold it up here and we're going to squint at it to kind of see does that disappear. And boy, it's about a nine, I would say. So the lighter color that we want to mix is going to be, so when you're adding your white, um, you know, I could give you a recipe, but we kind of need a pile of paint. So the lighter color is going to be a nine on the value scale. And then the little bit darker color, let's see if I got it about there, maybe a little bit more white. And if you know the value, then you can get pretty darn close every time. And notice that I didn't just move that pile into that pile of paint. Um, if you do, you'll end up with a big puddle of, of color. We want these close, but we don't want them too close. Maybe one or two values away. See how we're using that terminology. I'm going to hold that down there. And I'm going to say that's a 7. So that's perfect. We have a 7 in our darker value. That's going to be our background color. And then we have a 9 in our polka dot color. And so that's going to be like a tone on tone thing. If you had the values, um, if you had, for example, if you had it that dark, which would be, let's see, that would be maybe, gosh, maybe a 5 or a 4, then what you would have, if you put that light color on top, you would have such a dark contrast that it would be um, too busy. So what I want to do is I want to have just a little tone-on-tone -tone kind of funky background um, uh, motif. And so I want just a very faint tone-on-tone -tone kind of thing going on. Okay, so that's where we're getting started. So you're going to mix up that 7 for your base coat. You're going to use your sponge roller. I'm going to make sure that my banner across the top is straight. So I'm going to use a compass. And we are selling the replaceable LEDs now on the website because you cannot find them anywhere. Okay, so we measure it, and then we just run our compass straight along the top using the line of the banner itself. 
to create that straight line. And then I'll know where I need to put more polka dots or less. I'm going to use a filbert brush, number six. Whatever will fit inside your polka dots if you do it on a different um, surface. Because we want that round edge. You could use a flat as well and just do kind of a C-stroke thing. A stencil for this would be gray, except I didn't have a stencil that was polka dots the right size, so I will just have to make do. Go right through my handle there. Just a nice flat base coat. I did a, that was a wonky little circle here. I did a nice experiment. This um, poor banner went around the country with me for a little while there. And I was on my trip and I kept trying to get it done and I kept running into all kinds of obstacles. And when I did that, it got pretty beat up and it was um, just a mess. It was, um, I mean, crumpled and wrinkled and, and all kinds of nasty stuff like that. And so I took it downstairs and I steamed it, the back side of it with my iron, which is one good reason to own an iron, if no other reason. And it worked like a champ, so now it's nice and flat and it doesn't look all crumpled up. Okay, as I'm getting ready to base the top part of the banner right here, I was trying to figure out if I wanted to go with a third color or some other kind of thing. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to go two values lower into the basement with this blue. So we've got our 9, our 7, and so this one would have to be then 5 on our value scale. And I'm going to look at that, and I think I've hit it right on the nose. So. We're going to make a mix of our blue violet plus our cool white and make it into the value 5. And then that will base the top of the banner. See how cool it is to have this common language to be able to discuss this stuff with. The other thing that I'm going to do to make my life easier is I'm going to go ahead and use scotch tape on this. I always tear off too much. I'm a tape maniac, I guess. So just anchor it on one side, hit that line. And I am going to use a brush to base this, cinch it down really good. But I'm, what I'm going to do up here is I'm going to brush away from the tape so that I don't get any bleed through. And I'm not going to work it too much into that. Got just a teensy winch bit of water in my brush. Because I don't need this to cover real dark or be real solid because it's going to just, because it's the same color basically. And I'm looking at this, and I'm looking at my value changes and stuff. I'm thinking I might be just a hair off. I'm going to mix a little bit more light in with it. Because I want it to be that tone on tone. I think that's going to be better. A little bit of water. Yeah, I like that better. It's amazing. You get just a little bit off, and you really can see it. Okay, let's see if I can even see it then. If I can't see it, then I'll have to add in. Oh, but don't forget paint does dry um, a little bit um, darker, about one or two values darker, depending on the brand of paint. Okay, so now we'll peel that tape off. Always peel your tape off immediately as soon as you can. There, nice straight line. Okay, now it's time. I was testing my yellow on here. We've got um, taffy cream, and I'm going to mix some water. I've got just an oval... Um, I can never remember what these brushes are called. An oval wash brush. Okay, so it's just like a medium size um, oval wash, you know, maybe what, three quarters of an inch wide. And blot on your paper towel, and we want to just wash in a little more water. Wash in our lemonade in our pitcher. So we have that color back there. Be careful of your pencil lines or your graphite lines, because if you um, go over them with a wash of paint, they will be sealed on. And I know this, and I'm going over mine anyway. And I will just do something to make them not count so much. The key with washes is you need to keep the paint moving while it's wet, because as soon as it dries, if I left that there and it dried, then I would end up with a big streak right there. So I have to keep it moving, everything wet and everything moving until I like the look of it. And then if you have puddling, that's when you blot on that paper towel so that you don't end up with too bad a puddle. Okay. I think I'll go a little bit more in here. It's on the surface. So it's like a second wash up here. OK. 
Okay, I'm gonna do a float. I've got a number 12 flat brush. I'm gonna turn things a little bit so I can keep it going. I guess I can turn me a little bit. Okay, try to keep my arm out of the wet stuff. I'm gonna float this back section of, I'm not gonna go through this um, sizzler mixer stick thing. I'm gonna float the back. Nice ridge on the paint. I lightened my graphite lines. Okay, and it's, you've gotta keep this as a controlled float. <clears throat> I'm using cool white. Okay, now I'll come up on this ridge right here. I think it's gonna be time to put my glasses on. Notice how I'm going back and forth over this. There's no need to try and do it all perfect all in one fell swoop. Okay, so now I have a rim. I have to get a bigger float. So how can we get a bigger float? Yeah, there's a couple ways. Get out your trusty dusty water bottle. And give it a little squirt. Get a big brush. And smooth that over the surface. I've just spread water now. I'm going to float with my brush. I'm going to load it wider than I had it before. And I can bring it here and get, you're going to go right next to the edge first. And we're going to go straight down over our yellow. Okay, then we'll walk it up. you got to be careful. If this isn't dry, which mine looks like it's not, then what you'll end up with is, um, you'll end up with it um, rubbing off the yellow. Okay, so gives us a little bit of a pitcher holding on to our drink. I'm going to go ahead and pause and blow dry and then I'll have to re-wet. I just want to mist ever so lightly. Don't make it a sodden mess or you'll have water walking everywhere. Okay, and I'm just going to go over the whole ding-dang doodle thing. I'm going to work it in. If you get it too wet, just use a paper towel and dry it off. Blow dryers are amazing things, so keep yours handy for this. Okay, so here we go. We're going to float. Got to come down here and float this bottom area. It's contained by glass as well, right? Okay, so you can afford to go kind of strong at the edge and walk it in. You know, glass, even though um, glass is clear, it has um, a certain amount of opacity where it's thicker and where light and stuff um, disappear. Oh, I thought that was my wet paint here. Okay, so we're going to bring it down, nice crisp line. Okay, and now walk out this float. Just keep playing it until you like what you're seeing. Now see, it's a little bit streaky and stuff like that, and we can do something I haven't done in a long time, which is dig out a mop. and blend that out. Wipe it off on a paper towel. And we'll pull out our super cheater techniques here in just a minute. Okay. Wipe it on a paper towel. Okay, then we flip it over to do the other side. The nice thing about this is it's big enough you can do. Ah, uh, see I'm looking at that in the monitor and it already looks like a glass. You know what makes glass glass? Um, you can see through it, you know, so we can see the background through our clear liquid. Um, the surface is a little bit stronger colored. We have our glass borderline. I think maybe I could use just a little bit more. Kind of go shape following with this. Don't just do a bunch of straight lines going in the middle of your picture because that, that wouldn't be how it was in reality. Not that we're living in reality land here. We also have to add just a little bit back here to indicate the back of the picture. Go right through my sizzle stick. Okay. A big round brush or a big filbert or you know, just whatever size brush kind of brush you want to use. The handle's gonna be a little bit stronger. Still going to be see through, so we don't want a base coat. It's a wash, so I'm blotting my brush. 
the ball of our little sizzle stick and pretending like it's one of those acrylic little things. Okay, so now when this comes down here, it's going to come down. Right. Here's when you need a straight edge. You've traced this on with your hand with the pattern. It's still in all likelihood could be cockeyed. So helps if you use your glasses. We want this to be correct. So we get it down here straight. But something's going to happen where it hits the liquid. And that is that it's going to offset just a little bit. Okay, so we'll get it down here. Decide where it's going to enter the liquid. And then that's going to have that same ellipse. And then it's going to be slightly, when it comes down here, oopsie, get that angle going. straight line and continue with your white by putting something inside the glass this helps give us our realism okay now we've got our music going on out there it's amazing you know you get a phone call and you run out to go answer it, then your glasses get left behind and you know, all these kinds of things. So in order to keep this, um, to give this some dimension to this little swizzle stick here, we're going to shade it with white down one side. Real strong kind of float. I have, it's better when you're trying to do something very controlled like this that you have a, um, a good brush. Mine is not so good right now. It's kind of splitting out on me. Lay that right under that ball. And then you're going to go chisel-wise. I'm going to turn my project, and I'm going to start at this um, water line here. I'm just going to go straight up the edge. It helps if you go sideways with your arm, because your arm can make a straighter line that way. I didn't want to pull down from this top thing right there, because that was where, um, where I had um, that, just that fresh float. Okay, so don't want too much water. And you know, I think I'll go ahead and just do this lower area here. Do a bigger float on the other side, like a C stroke. Okay, and then we're gonna pull down on this side on our chisel of our brush. Reload as you need to. Set. Okay, I'm going to bring it just on the tip of my brush over here, and it's thicker. Okay, I'll get the back a little bit less. Okay, but we have to come back behind. This is where we would decide if our little sizzle stick was transparent or not. Okay, let's give us a little bit of kind of a shading with this on our handle. This um, big giant brush is actually kind of amazing. It is uh, number eight. Royal Fusion Round. Um, it keeps a pretty good chisel. You can do some pretty silly things with it and um, base coat and some other things and be pretty abusive to it. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Finishing that up. Okay, we don't want to spend too much time playing around with this picture. We want it to look picture-ish, but not, um, you know, not get too 
Oh, I'm all about the glass kind of moment. If you're really into that, go for it, but I am not. Okay, so I think we'll go over here and do our um, dripping lemonade. So what we're going to do with that is we're going to first drip it in yellow. So I'm going to kind of base coat it with a float in the yellow color. So it's just going to be kind of a wash to fill it in. And I had decided someplace, my pattern is just a disaster, that I was going to have another one coming down over here. I'll wash that one in. And one more. On that side. Okay. This is going to be very much like last month's project um, in that we had the shade and highlight to make them look like water drop um, things on our, our little um, butterfly wings. So we're going to go into our white, strong white. And we're going to come down this front edge and we're going to highlight. Okay, so I'm going to do that again at the top I messed up. Same thing here. Okay, same thing over here. And then we will take our little liner brush. our white paint and we're going to give ourselves this line coming down if I can get it strong enough line coming down blue it's the only way to get this shadowed my blue is very very um, dry okay so I'm going to get it very washy and float and I'm going to come down this other side and float on this, whoops, on this back side. Okay, and we can come down here, the end of our drip, and just float right underneath it. What we get to do is we get to put a reflection on this um, sizzle stick, and it's highlight. So I'm going to skip highlight this down, keeping it on the same area. Okay. And then let's give ourselves a little highlight on the rim of our pitcher. Bringing that forward a little bit. It's getting pretty good. One of, one of our great cheater brushes, which is our oval stencil brush. I call this dry rubbing. We're going to use a dry paper towel and a totally dry brush, and we're going to pick up golden straw, rub it off on our paper towel. And then over on this edge of the pitcher, not on our float, but next to that, I'm going to go right over our banner because that doesn't matter. We're going to deepen the color of our contents. Golden straw. And we'll do just a hair over here. I don't want to dry it strong over here. Down below. Put the back up. Okay, down below a little bit. Actually, that could probably be a little stronger all the way down here because it's underneath all this stuff. Okay. Now within what we just did, make it stronger. So don't go out as wide as that original area. I guess that was about an inch, and then this is just right up the middle. Along our pitcher top. And we'll just scribble in just a little bit of that over this little stick. Okay, I've got my lemons traced in there. Um, I'm gonna now I'm gonna go ahead and wash it. I own about 50 of these, so I'm washing my brush. These have got to be totally dry to work. Um, so you need a couple of them. The great news is they're super cheap. Okay, 
So that being said, we now have to put in some sort of um, lemon type effect. So what we're going to do, I'm going to pull out a little round brush and we're going to use washi golden straw. Put your glasses on because you're going to need your edges here. And we're going to give these all rims of um, rind, I guess. Just different thicknesses if it's facing outwards or not. Okay, this one's just facing flat forward. So you need water with this, otherwise it's going to be way too strong. Okay, maybe this could be just a little bit off the edge. Now see, that's looking a little bit strong to me, so I'm going to blot it with my finger. And I'm going to go right over the front of that sizzle stick. My son Joe can't say pizza schmitza, and I think I can't say sizzle, swizzle, sizzle stick. I guess we all have our defects, huh? Okay, so then we'll go here and give this one that's poking up out of the water, out of the juice. It's just like a cut slice. I've never painted things floating around in liquids before, so this is kind of fun. Okay, and we'll do the same with this one. Give it a, a semi-side view. Okay, and then the stuff floating around up there. You can just make some different shapes going back there. Now yeah, there won't be floating lemons down there. Okay, and now we add in, we're going to use our cool white and mix it in with our um, golden straw. And we want it more white than anything, but we want it warmed up a little bit. Okay, so. Our lemons are going to have these centers. We're going to find about the center of this. And this is kind of going to get a little bit, um, you know, let's make our little spokes real sketchy, almost like we're sketching with this. I don't want that to correspond with um, the line of our sizzle stick. So fairly even. Okay, so that's our kind of our sections. I don't like how that did its thing there. Okay, now the arch over the top. Okay. And then you kind of just fill that in just a little bit. Scribble it in. Don't base coat this. A little bit of so we come over here, right over the top of our little stick. Well, I know you can always tell I'm focusing. I shut up. Okay, so just nice and keeping that line where the rind goes. And there's a teenager with a car right there pulling into my driveway. Can you tell? These two, my son and his friend, and a friend who's a girl all gotten jobs with a local farmer this summer and they've been bringing home fresh produce and all kinds of great and wonderful things. And now the dog is letting everybody know that he's here too. And now that's my husband telling the dog and everybody else to shut up. Okay, and now to do our center, so let's go ahead and do the rest of these. The I have to make our lemons lemony looking. So we're going to use a wash in that same brush of the golden straw and just shape anything that's misshapen. Lots of water. I want it real strong. Okay. See, that one goes behind that, but this one goes on top of that stick. I think that's kind of one of the things that gives some of this stuff depth, is when we put things 
in front of and behind other elements of our design. What we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of our white and do a nice pretty sheer float. <clears throat> To make that rind kind of stand out. Nothing crazy strong. Okay. So we're going to paint this banner. I'm messing around with cool neutral, but I think that's going to be too dark. So I'm going to bleach to sand. I've got it in my flat brush. A lot of water. I'm going to wash this puppy on. Decided I want to try and add some fun little flowers. I'm looking for a way to kind of fun this design up. Every now and again I just get myself stuck in a little corner. I know what I want and I can't quite execute it. It's very frustrating. And the last thing I want to do is compromise what I want. So then I'm in my stuck spot. Okay. It's got that washed off. Which is this a half inch Royal Filbert comb, number 930, with cool white. And with shape following strokes, I'm just kind of highlighting the middle of this sign. Real long strokes. And then kind of just smudge it. Okay, I'm going to break up that body of color with just a little bit of movement. So we'll use the washi golden straw to base. And not base, wash our back lemon here, our whole lemon. And this is coming into the foreground. So we need to make sure that um, it's nice and strong, stronger than this is. Okay. It's got a nice kind of even wash on there. I'm using that great big giant round brush. Just nice and full and fluffy. It just carries a lot of water, which I'm liking, and it'll flatten out. There could be some dimply looking stuff on this lemon. It wouldn't have to be um, um, super ultra smooth. And let's give that peel back here on this other front one. Now this is a cut lemon, so we know what to do. We do the same thing that we did up here, except for a little bit stronger. We float our lemon. I'm going to under wet this just a little bit because we want a bigger float. And I'm going to use my just um, the oval glaze brush. I'm going to float with um, honey brown. Okay, and I want to just not make this be a huge moment but I need to darken this up and I need to bring it forward just a little bit. Okay. It's kind of hiding just a little. Okay, come down here. This bottom area will be much bigger, so I'll load again. Just kind of tickle that in. Just a little bit more up here. Okay, that's bringing that forward just a touch. Okay, now I'm gonna bring this bottom edge. I'm all over the place here. Deepen that up. I don't want these to turn into oranges, but I do need this peel to come forward. So I don't know if I'd be be calling this as much a float as I would be um, almost like a glaze. OK. 
Okay, so while that's drying, I'm going to bring up here just a little teeny bit. We don't want to go crazy with this color on just some of these edges and some of these peels. The main ones, just to strengthen them just a little bit. And we could shade, oopsie, notice how that's not really so much a shade, it's a mess. Just flick some color in this sections. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing down here. Check out where my color is. Okay, time to float again with honey brown on the big lemon. Keep my float a little bit more controlled this time. I don't know what happened to my lemon. It's got streaks in it. I'm going to probably just add to the charm, right? That's what we say when we screw up. It's adding to the charm. Okay, so I'm getting lemony looking down here, I think. I'll walk that up. I'll deepen the edge and then walk that color up our lemon. And we'll wash it over these charming things over here. We need to get a little bit more um, texture on our lemon. I'm going to go into unbleached sand using these angle bristle stipplers and water. And I'm going to move my brush around not having it stay the same way the whole time, keeping it stronger in the area that's getting the light and reflection and stuff. Erase some of that charm, huh? Okay, and then I'm going to blot my brush to get some of that back here. Get a little bit of it over here, just like it's that surface texture. And then use the honey brown Kind of the same way, trying not to go in all the same spots that you did that way. It can be darker down here in the darker area. Okay. Okay, so it occurs to me that this lemon needs to be darker back here where this one is hanging over the top of it. So I need to come down and give that that shadow type effect. And maybe even a little bit here where it's crossing in front. So we can define that one. So it's sitting there. Okay. Blow dryer. Great fun now. We get to dry rub. We're going to go into our cool white and our dry brush, our dry crescent brush. And we're going to rub in the highlight area our lemon. stipple it. I can't, sometimes I just can't get the rub to rub off. It's a nice stipple. So nice round highlight. Yeah, that's looking pretty, pretty highlighted. Okay, rinse my brush. Oh, you know what? I didn't really want to rinse my brush, so if you've already rinsed yours, dry it off. I want this lighter in the middle, so I'm going to just rub it with this white. Give it a little bit of a drape kind of a look. Our cool white into our lemon slice here. Just a highlight. Not everywhere. need to give us a little sparkly shine kind of deal on our... I'm going to flatten out this brush. And give it a... Well, it should be shape following. There we go. Okay. Tacky tan. I'm going to shade along our edges with that oval glaze brush. We're going to bring in some of these um, foldy, streaky things that show that it's draping. Okay, 
Okay, it's a nice washy kind of a float. I'm gonna give these little knots the same kind of effect. Careful because I have to bring these out too. I'll drag these puppies in pretty far. It's a saggy kind of a sign. It's just a cloth some kids have dug out, right? Because they made their lemonade lemonade stand. An old pillowcase or something. Okay, and I think a more cool white, so I'm just loading that brush on the tip and bring it in on the edges. Okay, and even more at the middle. This is all wet and wet. Everything is And be careful about these lines up here. You don't want them to go in opposite directions. I'll just give these a little bit of a highlight kind of thing. On these um, little knot things here, we're going to want to pull out like um, knot impression things, you know, where, where they gather. Once again, this isn't rocket science, so we don't have to we're not counting them, we're not worried about it, they just need to look like something's going on there. Strengthen those others. Load into the bleached, unbleached color and then make those um, gather spots right there. Gather spots, I'm not sure what you'd call these, the knot thing, and then load into dirty brush a little bit of the khaki tan and wet and wet make some movement happen. Okay, it's time to add our lettering I'm using boysenberry pink. Is my dog going crazy about something? And it's time to kiss. And I know that sounds a little wrong, but we need to not have this color just be isolated and alone, which we're having little flowers and things like that as well. But we can kiss a little bit of pink over here and just red up or pink up just a little bit so that we can carry that color around. Bring it into the corners over here. So you don't want color to be sitting all by itself. It would be like lonely. Here we go. A little bit more, I think, in through here. Oops, I forgot our five cent sign. So I'm gonna find my brush. And of course that's got to be backwards. So now we have these um, sticks over here, just khaki tan. I don't want anything too strong that's going to stick out. So and these are really wonky little sticks. Um, they're, you know, some kind of branch that these kids found out in their yard. I'm trying to make them too regular looking. kind of thing. This is coming from behind that handle. I probably could wash it really a lot and bring it so that it looks like it's coming out of the glass or from behind the glass. Okay, now see I just ignored my own little rule, but for some reason I want that to flip up. Maybe that's flipping us back up to the top. I'm going to mix in a little bit of olive green. I want this lighter up here. That's too heavy, I think. So I will make that lighter in just a minute when it dries. 
So note to self, make it lighter. So now I've already mixed in like half and half olive green. <clears throat> This one's got a burr and kettle pink. Okay, and we'll just wash in a lot. These kind of light. We don't want this to be like super duper strong. Okay, so where does that other one come out? Over here. have to cover over those um, the details, the lettering details. So we're going to give it a nice yellowy center. So we'll go back. When that dries, we'll go back and we'll make sure that that covers up. Okay. Decided I didn't like these vines going up in front of my lemons, so I erased. If you put, um, you take your white eraser, you dip it in water, and you erase over your dried limes, then it will erase off um, it will erase off the paint mostly. So now what I have to do is I have to go back and patch. While I'm doing that, I'm going to deepen the white on the bottom of this banner. In the front, I can make my pink strong again right there. Just those green lines just got just a little bit too busy for me. So I decided to leave them in these other spots, but um, the green was just like, ah, get it away. So I'm going to go in and do a second coat just to kind of cover, and then I'll refloat and retexture. In the meantime, I'm going to get out some royal fuchsia, and I want to just float in kind of some flower petal-y looking things over here. Do the same kind of thing. I'm going to keep him floated just a little bit more with the shape of his petal. Okay, we don't want him as dark maybe because he's up here by himself and I don't want that weight. You know, I don't want him being real heavy. So maybe we'll highlight him a little bit more or I guess maybe this is a her. Okay, that's Royal Fuchsia. Honey Brown, and we're going to shade our flower centers to the downside. Add a little squiggle in there. It'll be just kind of fun. Yeah, just a little Verhauser Green kind of self-shade these lines. Bring out a vein. And go into our olive green and do the same kind of thing, just on different portions. So I'm still not liking this right here. I think we need to shade this. Mm, gotta be darker. Let's add a little blue, not pink. Blue. It's like sitting on top of that, but it's not doing anything like casting a shadow or anything. I think blue is the darkest color on my palette, so I'll mix a little bit of that light blue in with um, the khaki tan and make it be almost like a shadow color. Give it a little bit more weight. With a little bit of khaki tan. 
not so much blue, so I would mix it with my palette knife as I sit here and ignore my own advice. We need to shade to shade down the sides of our stick. So it doesn't look so um, flat. Okay, base these scallops in with just a lighter version of this color, so not about the same as our polka dots. In fact, we'll just call it that. And we're going to go into our cool white. I just have the sneezies today. I'm going to make some little strokes. I'm going to make these like a little eyelet lace, I think. Doesn't have to be too perfect. Just even, kind of, you know, the same amount of strokes in each one. I'm not worried about anything matching up or looking the same. I think this is kind of coming together like a little window shade or something. With some dip dots. These are going to take forever to dry, so do them when you can, um, when you can leave it or blow dry it like a freight train. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the end of our brush, and we're going to make the biggest dot in the middle, and then we're going to let them fade down the sides. Dip again. You've got to use fresh paint for good dots, and then start the process all over again. Wipe your brush off every. No, oh, I don't know. It starts feeling out of control. Get a new puddle of paint if you feel like you're not getting good dots. These little banners are just nice, I think, for you know the seasons. You know, they sell them in the store. Um, you know, for those yard banners and things like that. And A, they're not normally what I would choose. And B, why would I buy one when I can paint one myself? <clears throat> it's a great place to hang some artwork right outside your door. Makes a nice gift. Okay. Now we have to do some strengthening. I'm going to let those dots dry for, you know, ever, because they do take forever. And I think right now what's happened is our pitcher has gotten lost, so we need to unlose our pitcher. So I'm going to use that oval glaze. I remembered the name of it. And we're going to go down here and we're going to make our float much stronger. I have to choose, do I want that stem to go behind? I guess I'll leave it where it's at. Much stronger walking it out. Notice this time I didn't wet. I'm using a much bigger brush. Okay, see, I can really see the difference between that side and that side. That's what we want to see. Come down here and give some body to the bottom of the pitcher. <clears throat> Even though it's kind of should be dark down there. Okay, come over here, nice and wide. Reload your brush as you need to. We're using the cool white for this. Now you could do this all on the first step because I designed these right on this camera, as you can tell by all my mistakes. Um, I have to. I go back at the end and strengthen things so that I can tell what needs to happen. It's a good way to go. Um, it's a good way to, um, you know, to kind of ease if you're not really good at floating and you don't know how much is too much and stuff like that, then this is a nice way to do it. You can go do it and then come back to it. Get that off of there. I think our handle is going to need to be much darker too. Okay. And I unrounded it. There we go. 
Okay, and then we have to give a little lemons just a little bit of a boost. We've got that, um, these centers and stuff, I think we need to make them brighter. So, we will slice centers. So not quite so lost. I've got just a little bit of cool white with the um, taffy cream in my brush. Okay, down here, down here. Okay, <clears throat> much perkier looking. Same could be said for our um, lower area here. Strengthen that up. A little less with the taffy cream, a little more with the cool white. <coughs> Pardon me. Some seasonal something's got a hold of me. Get the highlight on there nice and strong. I think we can use the cool white, not very wiped off, and I think we can go right on top of our sign. And then I'm going to dirty brush into the golden straw, and I'm going to find a clean spot. And I dirty brush so that I wouldn't have to wash this brush out. And now I re-dipped, rubbing all the paint off, that way it's not so um, muddied. Now what I want to do is I want to deepen this area of lemonade here. Deepen the color so it's a little lemonier. Much stronger lemon color. Okay, and then down here, really strong. with over here. Okay. And I even dip into the honey brown dirty brush. And then on this side where we tried to make it darker earlier, let's deepen it over there with that honey brown. Everything is disappearing into the liquid. gives that picture a lot more weight. Okay, and then the next thing we've got to do is we've got to give the picture its um, highlights. Oops. So we'll go into the cool white and we will go Strong. It's a reflected light. Okay, and then we'll go in with very strong paint. And we'll give it its little reflected light there. And we're going to use our Q-tip to clean off our green spit on it. Okay, now I'm losing my lemons down here, so I'm going to go in with honey brown to find my edges. We're going to do a little darker blue, so go up a couple values, um, polka dots. Last step, I believe, is going to be to shade just a little bit down on the edges with a dry rub. Hoping those dots are dry. 
throwing it around just a little bit just to keep your eye in. Oops, those aren't dry, so I'll stay away from those. I have the defective banner down here. The stitching is all wonky and stuff, but nobody will notice if we do all the stuff to it. Okay, and then I think a little bit stronger blue up in the very top. Make lemonade. 